a political candidate, candidate has asked you to conduct a poll to determine what percentage of people support her. If the candidate only wants a 4% margin of error at a 90% confidence level, what size of sample is needed? So <clears throat> first we need to ask ourselves, is this, there's two types of problems in chapter eight. There's, there's um, problems involving the proportion. Proportion means um, the amount of the total um, that have a certain characteristic or the percentage that of a, to of a population that have a certain characteristic. That's what a proportion problem is. It's a, you know, it's an amount of the total or percent of the total that have a certain characteristic. <clears throat> and then, or it could be a mean problem. And a mean problem would be asking you um, about the population average height or average, um, some type of average a characteristic that, that would be estimated by taking the average. So um, it's usually something you measure like in the, <clears throat> so you have to decide, you know, are they asking here, you know, for the average height of the population or, or um, the average, you know, measurement from the population, or are they asking for the percentage of a population that has a certain amount? If um, it's the second one, then it's population proportion problem. And if it was the first one, it's a population mean problem. And um, because you have to identify, it's really important that you identify between the population mean problem and the population proportion problem because there's different formulas. Let me show you back to the, this is um, the, um, the notes chapter eight. See, the 8.2 is all about the population mean. And so, they have formulas that are all, you know, the calculator instructions, and they have the formulas for the lower bound, upper bound of a confidence interval. And um, they have this, this function for this equation for finding the sample size needed. And these are all equations only to be used in when you're um, in a mean problem, when they're talking about, the average value of the population or mean value of the population, then you would use those formulas. But if they're asking you for a the percent of a population that has a certain characteristic, then you want to use these before. In 8.3, you want to use the formulas in 8.3. So there's the lower and upper bound, and here is a formula for um, your sample size. So this is the one that we're going to be using today because this problem is a proportion problem because it's asking you you know, what percentage or what proportion of the people will support her. So <clears throat> this is the equation that we're gonna wanna use. Is this, um, you know, to determine the sample size necessary for estimated population proportion within a specific margin of error. <clears throat> so our biggest deal with this, prob with this problem is we have to, um, <clears throat> There's just three values that we really need to input to just um, simplify and solve this problem. One is this p hat. That is um, either going to be a prior estimate of um, a um, the pu propor sample proportion. p hat is always sample proportion. So if they did a prior study um, and they, or if they did a prior sample and they got um, a a sample proportion, then you would plug it in there. They used to tell you there's a prior sample. If they don't give you any prior sample, then the, the, the one that, this is kind of like the worst case scenario, it, um, that is going to give us the largest um, number of people to sample. You just use, would use 0. 0.5 for the, um, for the P hat here. And that's what we're gonna do in this problem because in this problem, they do not give us any value for the p hat. So we have to use 0.5. See, in some problems, they'll say the prior an estimate of p hat is this value, or the prior sample, or we believe the population proportion was this value in, in previous years or something. Then it's kind of like a, a good estimate of the population proportion from, and we would use that for our p hat, but, um, we have no prior information about p hat, so we use the 0.5. 0.5. 
Okay, so we know p hat is 0.5. I just plug in 0.5 everywhere. All right, then we need to know what is this the alpha over two. And first we need to know what alpha is. So the easiest way that I remember what alpha is, is I think about alpha is what we're not confident. It's how much we're not confident, if that makes sense. So if we are 90% confident, in this problem, it says we have a 90% confidence level, then um, how much are we not confident? Well, that's 100% minus 10, 90%. So I do, it's 100% it's minus my confidence level. And that will give me the alpha, but I have still have to write it in, um, in um, decimal format after that. So I do 100% minus 90%, and then that gives me 10%. And then I still have to always might write alpha in a decimal format. So then it, I move the decimal twice to the left and it's 0 0.1, so zero. 0.1 is equal to alpha. Okay, or you could put 0.10 just to, I like to put 0.10 because then you kind of know that where I got the, you can kind of trace back to where we, I got that number from. Okay, um, so now I plug in Z alpha, Z 0.10. So Z of 0.10 over two. So this is important that you have to do the 0.10 divided by two first. You would not find Z of 0.10 and then take the, that Z value and divide it by two. No, you take, you do it right now. 0.10 divided by two, it's so that's 0 0.05. And now to find any, now, you, then you just like remember the, the, the way, way we find any Z sub alpha value. The way we find any Z sub alpha value is just by doing inverse norm and then one minus alpha, zero and one. So I just do, this is gonna be equal to inverse norm. And there's just a calculator, um, entry that I need to put in, one minus 0 0.05, zero and one. So I just take my calculator. This is a calculator that's very similar to the TI-84. You know, I'm not sure if it's gonna give me the value for this, um, but let's try it, okay. Second bars um, inverse norm. And I, oh, I always have to input the area to the left. That's why I did one minus. When my is 0 0.05, and then I do zero comma one, and then that's my number, point one point six four, and I'm gonna round to the fifth, one one point six four five. However, um, since um, we are not completely done, I don't want to truncate any numbers right now, so um, I'm gonna try to keep all those decimals in there just so that you guys can kind of, I'm gonna truncate it when I when I write it, just like so you can see what I'm writing, but like I'm gonna try, when I actually do the calculation, I'm gonna keep all these decimal places because we need to be as accurate as we can. And we shouldn't drop any decimal places before we do our final calculation. We should only round in the final answer, you know, ideally. So I'm gonna plug in for Z alpha over two, for that whole thing, I'm plugging in 1.645 because that's the value that I got right now from the Z 0 0.05 was equal to one, approximately 1 1.645. And then the E that I have to plug in right here is the margin of error. And that they said is 4%. I just write 4% as a decimal. 
So I moved the bit decimal twice to the left. So it's 0 0.04. So that's what I plug in right here for the E. Now I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm not going to do 1.645. I'm going to keep all the decimals in there. X. So see how I have all the decimals in there and I'm going to divide it by 0 0.04. So divided by 0 0.04, okay. Then um, now, um, <clears throat> I don't like how I did that because like, hopefully it took the 1.645 and divide by 0 0.04. But I'll, I'll double check it as we go. Okay. And then now they say square that because this needs to be squared. So I square and the, and I could, I could do second negative sign to infer the answer again. And then I press enter. So then I get this 1690. Then I can times by this outside part times by the 0.5. And then one minus 0.5 is just 0.5. So let's let me do 0 0.5 times 0.5 times this. I currently have this part of the answer, you know, so to multiply by times by 0.5 times 0.5. So times 0.5, enter, and then times by 0.5 again. This gives me 422. And then I can do 472. 0.74. And no matter, we're not doing typical rounding that we would learn in elementary, we're rounding up. We always round when we're finding sample size. It's better to be safe than sorry. So you're always going to go with more people than less people. They're saying a minimum that you have to, to sample is 422.7. So we can't do 0.7 parts of a person. So we're going to have to round that up because this is the minimum value that's acceptable. So for sure, 423 is going to be acceptable. 421 or 422 would not be acceptable. It's not enough people. So I'm um, going to do 423. So our answer here was 422.7. However, we always round up. So if, if this was like 422.02, I still would have round up to 423. And there we go. There's our final answer. So let's just double check it. There it is, 423. All right. Um, I hope that you found this valuable. Um, <clears throat> just be careful um, when doing this. Recognize how I, 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 I had to find my out to find this z alpha over two, or it's also called the critical value. Um, you have to first find alpha, which is what you're not confident in. That's how you do 100 minus 90 percent, 100 percent minus what you the, you are confident in to get the alpha and then write, make sure to write it as a decimal, but then you plug it in to where we see alpha and then you divide that by two and then you get z point z sub alpha and the z sub alpha formula says you always to find that value, you do inverse norm of one minus alpha, it was your one and then that's how we got this this answer of 1.645. And then we plugged in for that whole thing, z alpha over two, we plugged in 1.645 for that whole expression in the numerator. Okay, and then we just had to carefully follow ordered operations, divide, squared it, multiplied it by the 0.5, and got our final answer and made sure to round up. So I hope that you found that very valuable. Have a great day. Bye.